Okay, so welcome again in this lecture number 4 and here we will continue talking about the previous lecture. In the previous lecture we looked at the variation of various, we, we looked at the definition of thermodynamic properties, what intensive extensive properties are and how do uh, thermodynamic properties vary as a function of temperature. For example, we looked at the variation of specific heat as a function of temperature which typically increases as the temperature goes up. And then we looked at the variation of enthalpy as a function of temperature, enthalpy being dependent upon the specific heat, it also increases as a function of temperature and then we looked at entropy, entropy generally increases with temperature. However, the overall term G, uh, G is equal to H minus T S and so one increases and this term becoming, so this increases. with temperature and this decreases with because of negative sign due to minus T s term. As a consequence of this the free energy if you plot free energy as a function of temperature the free energy tends to decrease as a function of temperature. So, it is the relative change of free energy of various phases with temperature that determines which phase will be stable and which phase will not be stable at a given temperature. Uh, so, this is what we did. So, we were we looked at for example, this uh, if I if I change the slide, we looked at the example of liquid to solid. So, what we saw was uh, that uh, transformation is happening from liquid to solid as you change the temperature, as you increase the temperature and uh, enthalpy of both the phases increases as a function of temperature and if you, uh, so th this is for example, the orange one is the enthalpy of liquid, the, uh, the magenta one is enthalpy of solid. If you look at the corresponding changes in the um, free energy, the blue one is the curve representing free energy of uh, liquid and the, and the dark blue one is the free energy of solid. You can see that uh, below a certain temperature T m the free energy of solid phase is like, uh, smaller than free energy of uh, liquid as a result solid is more stable phase whereas at higher temperatures G l is smaller than uh, is lower than G s uh, as, a, as, a, as a consequence liquid phase is stable at higher temperatures. And if you see the corresponding changes in, in the enthalpy, the enthalpy shows a sudden jump at this temperature T m which suggests that uh, the heat is added in the form of latent heat of uh, melting. However, there is no temperature change and uh, basically at this point if we calculate specific heat, specific heat is del H by del T and specific heat would be infinity. So, basically uh, addition of uh, extra heat does not uh, does not lead to any change in the temperature. And uh, if you look at the T s term, the T s term is minus T s all right. So, T s term is minus and as you increase the temperature the T s term for, um, for liquid drops much faster as compared to solid because liquid will have higher entropy as compared to solid. So, that is why you see that the free energy for, uh, for liquids, uh, liquid phase which is the light blue curve drops much more faster as compared to the uh, free energy of the solid and this tells me that. Uh, basically, what what I what I, I was able to tell you is that if I summarize at high temperature, G um, L is lower than G S, making liquid stable, whereas at low temperature G L was greater than G S which means solid was stable. So, this was the take home message for, for uh, uh, free energy variation as a function of stability. Uh, if, you, if you look at the material systems. in single component then the most um, common example is of iron pure iron. So, pure iron is uh, at 
at low temperature pure iron is BCC structured we call it alpha iron. Okay. Let us say lower temperature at higher temperature. So, lower temperature would be T less than 910 degree centigrade and this would be T greater than 910 degree centigrade. Uh, it becomes uh, FCC structured gamma iron. Okay. Now, this basically uh, tells that if you compare for example, the free energy uh, and enthalpy now here. So, the free energy so if I plot the enthalpy first overall change in the enthalpy. So, this goes through 0 at 298 Kelvin and then at certain point there will be change in there will be minor change in enthalpy before it increases further because you know this is a solid to solid transformation both of them are solid. So, this is also solid and this is also solid and at this temperature correspondingly you will have a transition. So, your uh, free energy of uh, if I plot the free energy. So, free energy up to this point it will be uh, corresponding to. So, at up to this point it will correspond to alpha phase and then beyond this point it will be. So, it will suddenly change the shape at this point. So, this will be g alpha and this will be g gamma. If you wanted to plot the individual plots the gamma will continue to be like that and maybe alpha will continue to be like that and gamma will somewhere like this. So, these would be the individual plots let me, let me put the blue color here. So, this is how they would have been, but uh, if you just want to plot a single uh, if you just want to plot a single line uh, single line will tell you that initially choose the color initially it would be for alpha and then it would be for gamma. So, in this phase at 910 Kel uh, degree centigrade uh, this would be gamma stable and this point it would be alpha stable. However, unlike solid to liquid transformation this delta H will be small it will not be very large because all you have is you have a solid to solid transformation from BCC to FCC phase as a result the change in enthalpy is not very high uh, because the internal energy uh, is as far as internal energy is concerned both of these are solid phases. So, there will not be huge change in the internal energy um, as far as uh, delta H is concerned. So, this is how the curve is going to look like for uh, something like iron. Now, let us look at another, another th effect of another thermodynamic parameter called as pressure. Okay. So, this is uh, uh, what we want to hear is basically equilibrium as a function of pressure and its effect on so and its effect on phase uh, uh, presence of different phases. Okay, so let's make a plot of what we call as. Uh, we make a plot of plot of iron. Okay, so iron is a very nice system to uh, study this. So this is temperature axis. This is uh, pressure axis. Let's say pressure is in kilo bar. Temperature is in uh, degree centigrade. So let's make 400, 800, uh, 1200, 1600 this is 400, this is 800, this is 1200 and this is 1600 and, uh, and the line is the, the, the this line is something like that. Hmm. 
All right. So, so this would be nearly 125. Should be about 150. Should be about 100. So, so it should be 25, 50, 75, 100, 125, 150, they are not very equal. Uh, let me just draw these two little differently. Fifty and seventy-five. Now they are more equally distributed. So, so what you have here is on the y-axis we have temperature, on the x-axis we have pressure. Uh, temperature is plotted up to about 1600 degrees centigrade or even higher and pressure is plotted again up to 150 kilo bar or so. And at high temperatures, the iron is stable in the form of liquid phase. At in this regime, this regime is basically delta iron. Within this regime, we have gamma iron which is FCC structure, delta is again BCC and then we have alpha Fe at this lower temperature, BCC and then we have epsilon Fe which is HCP. So, this is the pressure temperature phase diagram of iron, single component pure iron. What we see is that at, uh, at lower pressures, so, what we have here is um, um, at lower pressure, uh, the iron transforms to uh, alpha iron transforms to gamma iron, alpha is BCC structured, gamma is FCC structured at 910 10 Kelvin before it transforms and then subsequently gamma iron transforms to delta iron which transforms to liquid phase at high temperature, 1500 and something is the melting point of iron. What you see here interestingly is that as you change the pressure beyond atmospheric pressure, the phase boundaries that the transition temperatures change. So, this is for example, the temperature corresponding to T gamma L, this is T alpha gamma. So, these are called as phase boundaries. Okay. This is T uh, alpha epsilon and this is T epsilon gamma. So, there are various phase boundaries here. Uh, we will look at the cases of for example, T alpha gamma and T gamma liquid. We see that T alpha gamma decreases as the pressure increases, okay, whereas T alpha liquid increases as the pressure increases. So, you see the difference. For, for the transition from for, for phase transition from alpha to gamma phase, both are solid phases. Okay. From for phase trans transition from alpha to gamma phase, as you increase the pressure, the phase transition temperature decreases. On the other hand, for transition from gamma solid phase to liquid phase, the phase transition temperature goes up as the pressure increases. And we will see why this happens in the next few uh, minutes. Now, so the observations are as pressure increases T alpha to gamma decreases, but T gamma liquid increases. And of course, at very high pressure what we obtain is a different phase which is epsilon uh, uh, Fe. So, at from the free energy relations at constant temperature, you can obtain this from the free energy expression that we wrote. So, we wrote dg is equal to dh minus T d s minus S d T and if you expand this further at, at constant temperature, you will make certain terms go equal to 0. At constant temperature, what happens is that del G by del 
p at constant temperature this will be equal to v. So, basically as um, pressure increases g also increases and the slope of del g by del p is the volume. So, this suggests that what it says that uh, what it says you can see from here is as the pressure changes uh, del g by del p is equal to volume. So, as the pressure pressure changes the g will change you have two phases phase 1 and phase 2 v is nothing but the molar volume. Okay. So, we can say this is the molar volume. Now, suppose you have two phases and for though both of these phases v 1 is not equal to v 2, the free energy changes as a function of pressure, but v 1 is not equal to v 2. So, what will happen if v 1 is not equal to v 2, which means the free energy change for both phases is not similar, which means delta g 1 is not equal to delta g 2 which means if these phases had to exist in equilibrium for, for phases to coexist in equilibrium delta the free energy changes for both of these must be equal, but they are not equal. So, in order to make them equal what will now happen is that. So, to make equilibrium work you have to temperature has to be changed. So, th this is a problem uh, in especially when the phase volumes are very different. So, molar volume of two phases V 1 and V 2 they are different to each other as a result uh, when you change the free energy as a function of pressure the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the changes in the free energy are not similar. And if the changes in the free energy are not similar which means one, if one phase is going to be stabler than another phase uh, that will create a problem at equilibrium because at equilibrium both if, if these phases if these two phases have to coexist with each other at a certain temperature and pressure uh, at a certain pressure then temperature also has to be changed. So, that is why you see in this plot at these lines at these lines the phase boundaries both the phases coexist. So, at this line both the phases coexist at this line both the phases coexist and this temperature is decreasing this temperature increasing because the molar volumes of two phases are different. As a result to maintain the equilibrium because remember at this point the free energy of both the phases are equal. So, to so as you change the pressure the molar volumes have changed as a result the free energies of both phases are not same. So, to maintain the similarity of free energy changes you need to change the temperature and in this case the temperature increases at this pressure in this case for example, the temperature dec the temperature decreases as you increase the pressure by the same amount. So, let us see this in this in more quantitative framework. So, basically we are going to define this now in the uh, what we call as quantitative framework. Okay. So, you consider uh, phase let us say 1 and 2 in equilibrium. Okay. So, uh, and assume both have one mole of each all right so the incremental change in the free energy so i can write uh, for phase 1 uh, dg 1 is equal to vm 1 dt dp minus s1 dt 
for phase 2 d g 2 is equal to v m 2 d p minus s 2 d t, where v m is the v we say v m is the molar volume. Okay. So, v m is basically the molar volume. So, now assume if 1 and 2 are in equilibrium, if 1 and 2 are in equilibrium which means g 1 is equal to g 2 and if g 1 is equal to d 2 then d g 1 is equal to d g 2 as well. If that is the case then I just equate the two equations. So, V m d p minus s 1 um, d t is equal to V m 2 d p minus s 2 d t. And if you rearrange the terms what you will get is d p by d t at equilibrium. So, this is at equilibrium. Okay. at equilibrium it will be S 1 minus S 2 divided by V m 1 minus V m 2 or you can say this is equal to delta S divided by delta V the change in the entropy of two phases and the change in the molar volume of two phases. So, basically what we see in this equation is uh, you can determine the change in temperature if the pressure is changed and the molar volume change is not equal to 0. Now, how to now calculate delta S? So, delta S can be calculated very simply. We know that for both phases, G 1 is equal to H 1 minus T S 1, G 2 is equal to H 2 minus T S 2. So, you can write delta G to be equal to G 2 minus G 2 minus G 1 and uh, which is equal to delta H minus T delta S and we know that at equilibrium delta G is equal to 0 as a result delta H is equal to T delta S or delta S is nothing but delta H divided by T where delta H is the change in enthalpy, the enthalpy of transformation. Okay. And so, this will make my equation read as d p by d t at equilibrium is equal to delta H divided by T. Uh, you can say, uh, you can say T c the transformation temperature into delta V. So, this is an important expression which allows you to calculate the change in the temperature when the pressure of a system is varied and if you have delta V which is not uh, 0 when the two phases have different molar volume then to maintain the equilibrium what is the change in temperature that is required. This equation is called as Clausius Clapeyron equation it is a very important equation as far as phase transitions are concerned. So, you can see that if a molar volume change is negative and if pressure is d p is positive then d t will be negative. If your delta v is positive if your delta v if delta v is 0 then obviously d t will be 0 as well, uh, but if delta v is positive then p is positive then d t will also be positive. So, you can see the temperature, the temperature to maintain the equilibrium will increase or decrease depending upon the sign of uh, delta V uh, as a, if, if d p is uh, positive. So, we will see the ramifications of this equation on the iron phase diagram as we saw earlier on the two phase boundaries in the next class. So, in summary I would just say in, in this class, uh, in this lecture what we have learnt is the effect of thermodynamic variables on changes in the free energy. Uh, uh, for as far as single as far as phase transformation in single component uh, systems is concerned. So, at a certain transition temperature the transformation happens 
as a function of temperature below that temperature free energy of one phase is lower and above that temperature free energy of another phase is lower making the two phases stable in different regimes. And then we looked at the effect of pressure which is related to uh, which in most cases related to change in the molar volume which has its own repercussion on the change in the temperature as well transition temperature as well. So, we look at that in more detail in the next class. Thank you. Thank you.